that's quite a span and I can actually begin with when I started teaching um, which was in 74 when I started teaching in the classroom and shortly on after teaching for three years I um, <clears throat> worked in the kindergarten program. They didn't have an all-day kindergarten program. Children at that time were only going a half a day and they started a pilot program wanting to see if children could endure a full day of curriculum and so uh, I was asked to participate in that program which I did and so that was at Pinkerton Elementary School and I did that and there were a team of teachers that we worked with um, and we team taught there were four of us and uh, we just went from we would come up with an idea that we would develop and we would each share it and work on it one day you know for each day we would take a turn and teach a particular idea and see then on Friday how it worked out for us and it was very successful and I can remember my own experience in the classroom at the close of every day I would always ask the children, uh, what have you learned today? Because I didn't want the children to ever go home and not be able to tell their parents, because oftentimes parents say, well, what did you learn today? And we always did a review of everything that we learned that day. And it was just exciting for me, not only for the children, but exciting for me when the children would say, well, what are we gonna do tomorrow? you know and and it was just really a, a joy I really enjoyed teaching the children and just at the end of the day you just the adrenaline was flowing because you knew that they had learned and um, after three years in the classroom there I was invited to participate in a bilingual program because we had an influx of refugees coming in and they needed to be taught English as a second language so I uh, considered that and joined the team of uh, teachers uh, teaching English as a second language to the refugees, which I did for six years. And uh, that was also a very good experience, you know, because the children, we were, the district gave us the opportunity to be as creative and innovative as we, as we wanted to be in the classroom and whatever they said work, use it. So they provided us with whatever materials we needed in order to teach the children um, English. And they wanted to be able to have the children to uh, acclimate into the regular classroom setting on a full-time basis. Whereas my responsibility initially was to work with them for an hour or two in the day and then transition them into their own classroom and successfully the children were able to actually excel in the classroom within a two-year period and uh, many of them were the top students they really excelled because they had a will and a desire to want to learn so they learned very quickly so I did that I, I've, I've had a lot of roles within the school district um, working like I said as a classroom teacher initially and then going uh, into a bilingual program for six years and then there was another window of opportunity that came about uh, as um, uh, a resource teacher so then my responsibility was to teach the teachers how to teach the children uh, in the classroom and I did that for a period of time and then later the instructional assistant position came about and that I did for nine years uh, before becoming a principal. And uh, so in each step along the way, uh, it was a pleasure to see success all the time, you know, because I felt like the children had the will and the desire and then we had uh, administrators who were supportive of what we were trying to do and we had goals that we were trying to set for not only ourselves but for the children as well and I, I think that we did a pretty good job of doing that um, and there were parents also that were very supportive of everything that we did and that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. 
I can recall back in the early period um, when it was first announced that schools were going to be integrated. I, I thought I gave a lot of thought about that as a uh, young person because the school that I attended at the time it came about, I was at Wendell Phillips Elementary School. And uh, at that time, I, we were living on 24th and Bell Fountain. And I had to walk to school every day to Wendell Phillips. And yet my neighbors, we lived in an integrated neighborhood and the, it was predominantly uh, white. And those children went to the neighborhood schools right around the corner, which was Jaeger School. And I can't think of the other elementary schools, but there were other schools there that we couldn't attend, but when integration came about, we had an opportunity to go there, but uh, I wanted to stay with my, my uh, finish out where I had started at Wendell Phillips, which I did. And then um, I later in high school, uh, Center, Central High School was on um, Indiana, 31st in Indiana. And I was at Lincoln at that time, and I didn't want to finish my last year at a new school. I wanted to stay with my friends, and I mean, although I thought it was a great idea being able to uh, go to your school of choice or the neighborhood school, I remained at Lincoln instead. When the students heard about it, and, and I was a student, <laughs> I myself, I think we all talked about it. There were some fears of, of some of the students that um, they were afraid to intermingle with the other students. We really didn't know what it was going to be like because we, so, we were so accustomed to just being around our own neighbors. Uh, but we thought it was a good idea. It was a good way to uh, mix and mingle with other people of, of, of other nationalities, you know. So it was just kind of the, the fear of the unknown, as you might say. We really didn't know what our expectations were. But one of the things I can give credit for to um, our environment, we really, you know, <laughs> I guess the blacks really didn't have to make the necessary adjustments that maybe the whites had to make because we always we were always in a position where we had to make the adjustment anyway. So it wasn't I don't think it was as difficult for us to accept the idea of integration as it might have been maybe for another group. Um, but we accepted it. We thought it was an opportunity to uh, open up doors of uh, opportunity for us in that we could uh, have sports activities with other schools. Um, just competitively speaking, we could interact with other schools uh, because before that, we would have to travel out of town to other schools in order to compete in our sports events or the other black school uh, that we had, which was over in Kansas City, Kansas, Sumner High School, uh, and R.T. Coles. That was it. So uh, we had to go to Liberty or St. Joseph, Missouri, I mean, or Joplin, Missouri, because I remember as a cheerleader, we used to travel with the team out of town for sports events. You know, just competitively speaking, you know, especially in the sports arena, I think we, we really didn't know what to expect, you know, but we had a pretty good team and we were the number one team uh, in school as it was. So competitively speaking, we thought, well, we had a pretty good chance of showing how good we were, you know, with other students. Well, as far as the teachers were concerned, um, I think they were pleased that there had come a time when we could go to school where we lived. And even though the boundaries were restricted at that time, 
but there was a time when uh, housing did open up and you could buy houses in other areas outside of 27th Street or on west of Troost or east of Indiana. And so um, I, I, I really feel that uh, the teachers thought this was just a great opportunity for us to be able to learn more. Because one of the things in, in our high school, even though we had the best teachers that we could ask for, because many of our teachers uh, had master's degrees and even doctorate degrees and were highly educated and ranked far higher than any of the other teachers in the Kansas City area. And so we received an excellent education in spite of the limited tools and resources that we had available to us. Because I remember that uh, we had a bookstore across the street from the school and all of our books were never new. They were recycled books from year to year. And those are the kinds of things that we wish that we had and it may have been based on the funding, you know, limited funding that was given to the black schools. But other schools had the opportunity for new equipment and uh, better science materials. So uh, I, I think that uh, we just saw this as an opportunity for expansion and growth. Many of us, like myself, we really didn't want to separate. I mean, we were having a great time, we were having a great education, and we weren't missing out on anything, to tell you the truth. And uh, in our neighborhoods, we had our doctors and our lawyers and our ministers and our teachers. We all lived in the same community, so we benefited from all of that. And so for that reason, we weren't really, con we weren't really concerned about integrating into other schools, although I know there were some students in my class that uh, after the integration in 54, they chose to go to Central High School. And uh, many of my friends, we all decided to stick together and stay right where we were because we were almost at the end of graduation, so we didn't want to break that bond. So we remained in spite of that. I think it made me a better person in a way, you know, in acceptance of others outside of my own community. Uh, you learn how to deal with uh, conflict and resolution uh, because we already had a foundation established through our families and our our community and our uh, teacher support and community support, we really were very confident in branching out and uh, accepting the fact that we would be integ integrating in with other students not like ourselves. So uh, it was easy. It was, I thought it was an easy transition, um, more so than perhaps in other states. Um, I think Missouri was Really, it, we really didn't have a lot of the, at least we didn't experience a lot of prejudices to begin with. I mean, we knew what our boundary was and we, and we had everything right at our fingertips. So we really didn't, it made it easy for us. In other words, we had our own grocery stores, the drug stores, the clothing stores and the social environment. Everything was right there. You had your doctors and your lawyers all in the community. So it was easy for us to make that transition. At the time of integration, um, we didn't get an influx of teachers from other areas. You know, even though schools were integrated, and by me remaining at Lincoln at that time, it didn't affect me, and I don't recall any other teachers coming from outside of the school boundary to teach in our school. 
And at the same time, I can only think of maybe one or two students that actually came to our school as a result of integration. And so it really didn't have a great impact on us. I, I just don't, I don't see how that had an impact on us. The social outcome was that we had at one point an opportunity to go to um, the department stores and uh, go to the movie theaters. Uh, but here again, I must say, and I have to say this over and over again because I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but we had movie theaters to go to and so the integration didn't stop us from supporting our own movie theaters. Um, the opportunity to shop in the department stores was available to us, which we took full advantage of. Um, as far as living, you know, in the neighborhoods, we were able to buy homes in other neighborhoods and expand our boundaries. So I, I really can't say how it really, if, how I had an impact on it or, you know, I was already prepared. I had growing up, we were already being prepared for all of that. You know, so it wasn't a big adjustment for me and I don't think it was a, a big adjustment for the majority of the students in the um, inner city. Well, I think that the greatest outcome was that we had teachers that really instilled in us to do our very best. And I must say that they really prepared us for going out into the world. Um, and I can speak to Archie Coles as an example because at one time it, w it was a vocational school. And when we went to R.T. Coles, you transitioned there in the eighth grade. If you wanted to take up a vocational trade, you could remain at R.T. Coles, or you could continue your education at Lincoln High School for a more academic uh, uh, preparation for college. And so when I was in high school, our teachers encouraged us to take up courses that would prepare us whether we wanted to go to college or whether we just wanted to work after we got out of high school. So course offerings such as bookkeeping and accounting, shorthand, um, drafting. A lot of the guys took drafting because they wanted to uh, work in those areas. Uh, whereas at R.T. Coles, you could take cosmetology, printing, um, industrial arts, bricklaying, uh, homemaking, dressmaking, you know, whatever, you know, you had all those various skill areas so that when you graduated, you were certified to go into those fields of, uh, of uh, occupation. And so for me, I took up bookkeeping and accounting and shorthand. So I already, and they also encourage you to take the civil service test. So when you graduate from high school, you were already on the register to get a government job if you wanted to. And although I chose to go on to college, right after I went into college, I was called for the civil service of course. I stayed with college instead. But uh, here again, at least when you went out into the workforce, you were ready to work and you had some skills to take with you. So I, I really feel that they really prepared us. And um, that's something that I think about oftentimes in preparation for our kids going off to school now with Lincoln High School. They have the baccalaureate program and the uh, advanced where children can actually graduate from high school with two years of college before they even graduate from high school, which I think is great. And um, I, just, I just think we were very well prepared. And I think that that's something that we need to continue doing to make sure that children can go out there in the workforce with confidence that they can do whatever they want to do.
it's a twofold thing, okay? When it was integrated in 54, it gave all of us an opportunity to m attend school together and learn each other's cultural differences. And then there was a period of time when segregation kind of came back again because there was what you call the white flight. When schools were integrated, then the whites that chose not to attend school with the blacks moved out. Those that could afford to moved away from the inner city to the suburbs. And so many of the schools transitioned back to being integrated to some extent. However, with uh, Lincoln, they did, you know, we had the magnet schools, which was a drawing card, which attracted a lot of students to want to specialize in particular fields because those magnet schools had an emphasis on maybe foreign language, could have been on computers, or uh, it just a lot of different areas. So that did draw a lot of students back into the, uh, the, inner, sit pardon me, the inner city schools. And I, I, it was an advantage for both. It was a win-win situation. And I think with Lincoln uh, College Prep especially, uh, children have to qualify in order to enter the school but they have a lot to offer and, and the school in itself has a 95% success rate and as the uh, ranked number one school in the state of uh, Missouri, I think that speaks for itself. We need to have, number one, more uh, parental support so that the teachers can do their job to teach and the students have the opportunity to learn. And we need to make sure that um, there is some kind of way that we can continue in offering children the opportunity to excel. We need to get teachers, make sure that the teachers really have the students' interests at heart. And that uh, we just do our best to make everything a success, I don't know, that just working together, the parents and the students and the teachers and the district just supporting us in our effort to educate the children and providing all of the tools that they need in order to be successful. It's good for people to learn to live with one another regardless, you know, and accept our differences and at the same time, just work together in trying to accomplish that one goal, and that is success. And um, I always used to use the motto, every student has the right to learn and every teacher has the right to teach. And if I think we all work together in doing that, you know, the parents have to support the teachers, the district has to support the, you know, the, the teachers and their effort to teach, and we have to demand that the children get the benefit of everything that they can possibly get while they're there in school, really do, and know that we have their best interests at heart. Uh, that's it, because we all want the same thing for our children, and whatever is available to us, we need to utilize that.